Inside Lemonster is brought to you through the generous support of Colonial Insulation Company, residential and commercial insulation and fireproofing services, specializing in blown-in cellulose as well as spray foam insulation. For more information, visit their website, colonialinsulation.com. And by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978. www.donotshout.com Welcome inside Lumminster. My name is Dean Masserall, the mayor for the city of Lumminster. And yes, we're live tonight, as we are each and every Thursday night, so that uh, you can be better informed about what's happening in your community. And, uh, well, there's always something going on, and there's so many ways to find out that information. But here, you can come right to the source. You can call me uh, anytime you'd like, even if we're in the middle of interviewing a guest. They don't mind. That's kind of the rules that we set. So if there's something on your mind, you'd like to ask a question, 978-537-777. 60 extension 3 and that'll get us on and uh, if you don't you just want to ask a question off there you can go to uh, you can do it by email which is uh, dmazzarella at lominster hyphen ma.gov um, let's see how else oh you can always call ask the question off air I will answer it and uh, we can do it that way as well so we have a busy show tonight we have uh, Sheriff Lou Evangelitis here tonight and uh, so that should be a, a good time. If you have any questions, uh, get ready for that. But we have a lot to talk about. Speaking of a lot to talk about, I was driving around the state uh, a couple of different places this past, um, oh, yesterday, in a Newton area. And guess what they were doing out there, Art? Well, what? I what said, were they doing? What were they doing? Well, I know what I was doing today. I'm driving down North Street heading towards Fitchburg onto Summer Street, and someone said, why are you smiling? I have never seen a neighborhood get change, transformation from the, not only the new pavement, the new, the new street markings, the sidewalks, the new street signs. It, all, it changed the entire picture and feel of that neighborhood. Mm. It's amazing. And I can't imagine. I'm sure it's going to it, it, it increase the value of the properties I, because of not only because of the way it looks and feels, but the accessibility, et cetera. I would say, yeah. Sure. And not only that, then you think of the, the four corners of our, our great city coming into Mechanic Street off the 190 connector. It makes you smile. All the flags, I, everything is pretty. Everything is taken care of. There's no trash. Now we got North and Summer Street. North Main Street is coming into its own. My old neighborhood, the Carbon. Yeah. <clears throat> Mechanic Street. There's another one with the new park down there, the new pavement. It, it's just. It's Somebody's going to think I put you up to this. <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. It, no. I, I, you know what? I, you know what? I, it's it's the whole team's pushing in the right direction. That took some time to happen, but we're all moving in the right direction and in the same direction. Yeah, in downtown, when I, today, made it up by the, where the Dunkin' Donuts used to be, the little park on the side there. It's just, uh, in, in, in the spring and in the summer, those of you that may that have not noticed or from out of town, you want to see a, a, a downtown that you want to sit down and smell the flowers, it's the city of Lummister. Well, there you it go. It turns into a village. It's beautiful. That's the plan, right? Yeah. And I don't work for the city. This is all done. I'm not being paid for this, which we got to talk with the internal affairs about that. I mean, uh, uh, well, I can just tell you, we had a new business coming into town today. It's going to take a while for them to set up, but um, you know, they they said the same things that you just said, so it must be working, right? It just <clears throat> it's user friendly. It, to take a term from today's crowd and the computers, our town, our city, our government. 
And the ground we walk on is user-friendly. Well, that's a good thing. That's a and good that thing. And that sidewalk on Summit to, to North Street is beautiful. I, I know. I saw someone using it today. It's a wonderful that's, thing. That's With what we that, hope, right? Pardon me? I said that's what we hope. We want people to use the sidewalks. Oh, absolutely. Is there a camera? Wait bike a minute. Path and is, there, is there a camera down there? Way down there? Is that one? Okay. Well, there I'll, you go. I'll yep, look that we way. Get the far camera on you. That you know, one. as a kid, right going down Summer Street today, looking over at the old railroad station over there, the old uh, roundhouse, we used to call it. Mm -hmm. When we were kids on North Main, we'd get down Battle Street into the woods, cross the pipe over to Nashua, and work our way up to the to the uh, train station. And the uh, they called them whalemen. They checked the, the hut boxes on the freight when they'd stop it yes. down there. Yep. And they had little huts with wood stoves in the mm -hmm. window. We'd go in there and shoot the breeze with them. One of my buddies that I grew up with, his father, that was his job. He, and then they'd take us into the roundhouse. We'd watch him turn the locomotives on this huge turntable. It was interesting stuff growing up. Did they stay right in that hut? They stayed right there? Yes. They had a, they had a couple, three of them. Right. I often wondered when they got rid of all that, they had some wonderful, real old, old cast iron wood stoves that they'd use for heat in the winter. Mm. I wonder what happened to them. Did they have water or did they use coal? If I remember correctly, a little bit of both. Yeah, yeah. And they would, had the tree line running to the back of it, which uh, was yeah, I would know, think, headed towards North Main Street. I remember just as a kid down behind the Victory Market on Lancaster Street, all of those uh, cars were, you know, all those cars were filled with coal. Yes, yes. I'll get up to the paper mills and... Right. Union Coal and Oil in Fitchburg had a big coal business. Holland Coal, Holland. Yep. In right over here on the side, they had a. They just pull right up and open the vat, yep. and it would just fall right out. And when the train crossed Battle Street, mm -hmm. it was going about a mile an hour. Jump on. Well, some people, I will not name names, would use it to get to the rec center. So when it crossed Mechanic, just hop off yeah. and walk over to town. Per that's using public transportation. Yes. Yep. <laughs> that about wraps it up for tonight. Checks well, in the mail. good to hear from you. And uh, uh, a, a shout out to all the gentlemen that work in the Department of Corrections. Uh huh. I see them in the morning when I go for my coffee, and I just shake my head how anybody can get up in the morning and go to that job. As I'll never understand it. And so thank them, God bless them, and be safe. All right. Okay. All right, Art. See you We're going to get you on soon. No problem. All right. See you. All right. See you later. There you go. The Art Report right here at Inside Leminster. Good way to kick off the night. And uh, the weather outside is changing, as they say. And uh, it was a, a kind of a started off. They said it was going to be a rainy day, and we had a little bit of rain. And then the skies opened up. It was beautiful, a little bit of clouds, a little bit of rain. But as the afternoon went on, a cold front came through. Got a little bit of snow out there, nothing much, but uh, just makes you think about how warm 40, 50, uh, 50 degrees is. And uh, we've been lucky so far this year, and uh, that's a good thing. And we, we needed a little bit of relief. We got March coming, but, you know, you get in the car at the beginning of the day or sometime midday, uh, walk outside, get in your car, it's already warmed up for you because the sun is strong, the days are getting longer. Uh, earlier in the morning, the uh, sun kicks out around 7, I think, 6.30, maybe a little sooner now. And then uh, 5.30, quarter of 6, it's still light out. So um, March 8th, I believe, is daylight savings time, so you spring forward. So it'll be getting dark about quarter of eight, uh, 7, 7 o'clock, somewhere along the line. And then you know. Sun is strong, and uh, spring is really around the corner. We're taking a short break, and we're coming right back. Uh, again, our guest, Lou Evangelitis, he's the chef. What's the uh, sheriff? Could be the chef. He's the, sh <laughs> the sheriff of... Worcester County, and uh, he'll be our guest in just a minute. We're taking a break. We'll be right back.
Nice job, Ron. Can you put the camera on, Ron, for a minute? No? I don't know if it's possible. I don't know if we have a camera. Anyway, that'll shoot over there because they're next to each other. So I guess the cameras could point at each other and look at each other. Anyway, uh, there's another uh, little segment from Ron Gerard. Uh, he takes a lot of the uh, photos locally and then matches them up with the historic pictures of the past so you can see the before and after. But there he has the, there's Ron, give us a little wave, Ron. And Ron, thank goodness we have Ron, he's out there all the time thinking about what else he can do. And uh, yeah, that was great, I love to see. So that what he did this time, it looks like, is you did summer and then winter, Ron, is that what it was? Winter, correct. Kind of a comparison and uh, how beautiful it is. 978-537-7760, extension three. Let's go to the phone lines and then to Sheriff Lou. Hello. Hey, buddy. Hey, what's going on out there tonight? Not much. I hope you're not walking around French Hill tonight because it's cold. No. Good. I just want to let you know that the deal is that McDonald's is two for five for fish sandwiches. So you, you got two fish for two fish sandwiches? Two, two, you can buy two yeah. fishes for five bucks. Wow, that's cheap. <laughs> yep. Do you give you extra tartar sauce? Yep. Really? Yep. Are you working tomorrow? No, I'm working there mon Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday next week. All right. Well, we can, unless you're there, we can't have free French fries Friday. Man Mandy said that you're welcome to come up to see us if you want. Right, but I, did you tell her we want free French fries or we're not coming up? <laughs> And I want them hot, too. Because work it with you. I, if, if, I want them hot, too. I don't want those the soggy <laughs> ones that are cold. They've got to come yeah. right right out of the kettle there, right out of the guy scooping them up just when they dump them sure in. All right. That's quality control. All right. I'll talk to you later, buddy. All right. Over and out. Bye-bye, buddy. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye. Bye. Free uh, French fry Friday. What do you think, guys? Huh? Can you say that three times quick? Anyway, our guest tonight... Sheriff of Worcester County, Lou Evangelitis. Good to see you. Thank you. Always great to see <laughs> hey. you. Thanks for having Little me. Look sharp on. tonight. Got your badge on. Look I don't good. have it on, but uh, I'll just yeah, my yeah, 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 yeah. Absolutely. You look, you look sharp. Thank you. Same. And uh, thanks for coming on the show. And, no, and glad uh, to be here. And I know there's a, a lot going on at, yeah. uh, at, for Worcester County House of Correction, mm -hmm. but the Sheriff's Office. And you've really taken, I have to say, you have really taken the sheriff's office and brought it out to the community. You've taken the sheriff's office and taken the community and brought it into the jail. Okay. Because eventually, whether they're there, they, uh, I, I guess the best definition for a house of correction is maximum two, two and a half years. Right. Is that a Correct. kind of accurate uh, mm -hmm. reflection of well, things? Well, that's a sentenced inmate. Now, we have pretrials who can be there. I've had people for murder being held pre-trial for five, six, seven really? years. Really? Yeah. So, so they can hold them there that long? Yes. You're a, for pre-trial. Just to, then to, to touch about the point of who does the Worcester County House of Correction right. hold, um, which a lot of people know of a sheriff, thankfully. Mm. Some people don't. But if you do, many people have asked me over the years, like, what does the sheriff do, actually? You know, And it's kind of a complicated situation because there's so many things we can do if right. we so choose it's not really a firm job description i've tried to change the definition yes. a little bit no very much so yeah and i'm proud of that and done a good job of it you. that's what i said to bring in the community inside and yeah. then take and so that way you know you're working with prisoners that are eventually going to get out they're going to need a job they're going to need some skills they're going to need right. some uh, uh, communication <laughs> skills ability of, to, to connect and mm -hmm and to engage, right? I mean, so all those things are important. Yeah, I mean, you certainly have a career in law enforcement. You understand, you know, how you can get the most effective results. And it, it really, just locking people up and throwing the key away yeah. was at one time the uh, the way it worked, and it didn't really work to serve the people that we represent, who are the law-abiding citizens, keep them safe. But just to just to finish that point on the, on the sheriff's right. department and the jail, so the House of Correction is what the, the primary responsibility of the sheriff is, and we right. run the jail and House of Correction, which is in West Boylston. And then I'll probably talk a little bit about our regional community correction centers because we have one right up here in Fitchburg that mm -hmm. serves the community here in Lemonster as well. But let's talk about the jail for a moment. So the jail is a place where people are either pre-trialed or sentenced inmates to non-felony less than two and a half year sentences. So you're 100% correct. All of our sentenced inmates who are approximately half uh, today we have a little over 800. We've been as high as 1,100 or wow. 12 in my time, but there have been some changes and some uh, reduction in the population, kind of a recent vintage in the last year or two. But 
We have about four or 500 people today who are pre-trial. They can be anything from murderers, rapists, sex offenders, or they could be people who have violated a probation, or you know, can be somewhat minor offenses with, with small bails, but they can't make them. So they will stay in the house, what we call pre-trials, and then we have our other side, which is the sentence population. Again, another four or 500 people on any given day, people who have been through the criminal justice system, been through the court system, been sentenced, and come to our place for, to serve their sentence. So there's that many people being held a pretrial. Yeah. It's hundreds. Hundreds. Amazing. Yeah. And, now, and so yep. would that be like uh, there was a dangerousness hearing held or something, and, and so they said, we can't release them on bail, they're too, too much of a danger to society? Or Sometimes some of those folks are down at other places, uh, psychiatric hospitals mm -hmm. or Bridgewater or something like that, but there's a lot of people in our facility who are on bail or no bail because they, they pose too much of a risk for flight That's or what I'm saying. They, they, yeah. they held, held a dangerousness hearing and said, no, oh, we can't. We, oh, they absolutely. Might, they might take off or something. This, I didn't realize there was that many. Yeah. That's sure so, are. so actual prison is serving time is four to five hundred. That's right. Yeah, we, we, I would say, matter of fact, our pretrials are a little higher. Mm. They're probably trending toward the 60% of our population these days. So it's a little different than people would think. But then again, a lot of people, you know, I always say to folks, uh, your life's going well, the less time you spend in prisons, well, unless course. you work there, or nursing homes. And I, I say that right. with sincerity, because yeah. whenever you spend time in a nursing home with loved ones, you just know it's tough place in life and and every day I see families visiting people at the at the house of correction and, and uh, you know it's a tough spot for families mm. I respect them they didn't commit any crimes they're right. trying to support those people sure. who are within our, our confines so um a mother's love right yeah. no matter what right Mother, mothers, come, mothers come no matter what huh? mothers they do right they do. they're the ones that come when everybody else doesn't show up anymore well somebody's funny, busy right funny you say that because a lot I talk to our inmates pretty regularly and I get involved with a lot of the programming we do at the jail and you know, I, my attitude is I treat the inmate with dignity and respect until they've earned the, they've lost that mm. uh, respect yeah. because of their behavior, which right. some do. But we try to give them an opportunity to rehabilitate themselves, and you have to work with people. And um, one of the things that's so obvious when you work with inmates, especially in drug treatment, education, rehabilitation programs, they'll tell you when they get to honest and they kind of cut through the nonsense and they get real with you, you know, their gang buddies and their neighborhood crew that they used to hang with, they ain't visit them when they get back, go no. behind the wall. No, Adrian they, Nicole LeBlanc that spent 10 years kind of you know, in the middle of, you know, writing about this and, exactly. and, and, and said, you know, at the end of the day, uh, once you go away, they're, they, after a few years, they're not sure you're alive. People are like, hey, is he still alive? <laughs> right. right? After a few years, people forget. Yeah. You no, know? that's the that's But your the mother doesn't forget. Mothers, I see loved ones, children, um, you know, it's a tough environment, but we encourage that because we know if people have a, a, a supportive environment to go home to, if right. they feel some support while they're there, they're more likely to be more interested in programming, more interested to turn their lives around, and more, more hopefully readjusted when they get out. So, you know, it's a complex environment. Yeah. It's a tough world, but, you know, I, I play a part in it as sheriff and in trying to serve this wonderful Worcester County community. And, and as you know, I spent a lot of time in Lenester. A lot of time. I, and I, I, just for the record, <laughs> just to be clear, when I ran for sheriff, I, I figured, well, I'm not probably going to win Worcester, you know? But I came and set up my headquarters in Lemonster because I love this town. Um, it has a real sense of community. It's big. It's the second largest town in Worcester County. Um, so I got a real affiliation with this town, a real uh, friendship with a lot of people yeah. here. And I always consider Lemonster my second hometown. And uh, I'm very proud of... of not only how I did during my campaigns in Lemonster, but but the work we do in Lemonster yeah. on a regular oh, basis. Yeah, no, you're a huge help to us. And I was just going to say, we'll touch on the uh, some yeah. some or all the work that you've done here. Um, but you know, I just wonder sometimes whether or not gang members or people that are hanging out with the wrong people, whether they understand that once you're incarcerated, nobody cares anymore. You know what I mean? That that that's gone. I mean, it's. Yeah. I wonder if they know at the other end what it's like, or they end up in a wheelchair because they've been shot or some right. gang activity or whatever. I just wonder if they realize the other end of this. I don't think they do. No. I mean, most of them get involved at a pretty young age. You know, they may have a lack of support in their family structure or their community. Yeah, Not seems, everybody. It seems cool, right? It to seems cool. Be part of it's, a gang. And... Right. I mean, you know, you, they're, 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 you, they become your de facto family support group. Um, you're not really thinking clearly. You're, you're a 15, 16, 18 yeah. year old kid. So you get in that, and you're not thinking long term, you're thinking short term and the benefits that come with it. But you're right on the money. I mean, when you see the long term impact, um, 
very hard to get out of those organizations once you get in yeah. them. When people come to our facility, we have gang negotiators, we have gang mediators in our facility because you might not think of this, uh, Mayor, but the, one of the things, for example, you get you come into the Worcester County House of Correction tomorrow morning. The first thing we have to do, we have a processing system we have to put you through, and the first one of the very first things we talk to, other than the fact, are you high? Are you uh, detoxifying right now? Or you know, are you going through withdrawal? Because if you are, we need to get you on a separate medical right. track, uh, and that's a lot of people. But once we get to assess someone, and, and what now, then we have to figure out, well, how are we going to process them, and where are we going to put them? Um, Gang affiliation is critical. We can't put two people in the opposite gangs, um, you know, in the same cell, for example. We have to try to separate people in the facility. We have limited space. So that type of knowledge for us is very helpful, and it also makes a safer environment for the inmate and for sure, our officers, of course, sure. as one of your, you know, callers called in, and I'm very grateful to hear that. Um, if you see someone, as, as Art mentioned, if you see a correctional officer going to work, they're wearing in uniform, just like your police and sure, firefighters. Absolutely. MPs, shake their hand. Thank them for the work they do. I mean, I will say this, and I have full respect for our law enforcement officials and our firefighters, but they spend time in the public with, you know, a lot of people who are law-abiding citizens. And uh, But when you work in corrections, you know, I mean, you meet a guilty person every now and then, and I say that tongue-in-cheek, but, you know, it's a tough population. Yeah, and these guys are and women are on the front lines, and they're working with people who have had not only difficult upbringings, but can be difficult to handle inside. And right. we have highly trained, one of the things I'm very proud of is when I ran, as you know, and it's 10 years now, so mm -hmm. uh, yeah. you know, I'm not in campaign mode at all, but I still like to remind folks of the, how much I appreciate this job. But the idea that you know we did, uh, we're the first sheriff in Massachusetts to remove money. I won't take a check from an employee or spouse. Mm. That had never happened before. Raise the hiring standards to the highest in Massachusetts corrections. Harder to get a job at Worcester County Jail than any other facility, including the Department of Corrections. Um, it, and we, we implemented a new process for promotions. It was based on professionalism and work ethic and mm -hmm. attitude, like many things you've done here in Lemister, not, you know, patronage and right. politics and that right. nonsense. So because the work is so hard and you need people who are dedicated and, and highly motivated to get the job done, that's what we were have now. Ten years as sheriff, I can say, I'm very proud to say that I didn't say this in my first five years. You may not have heard me say it until recently, but very confident we have the best sheriff's department in Massachusetts oh, right now. No, and I, I think we've been recognized by American Correctional Association, National, come to review us. They've, they've uh, accredited us three, three times in a row, and they tell us that we are all over the country, sheriff, when, we, when they're exit meeting. They say to me, Sheriff, I want you to know the, 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 the work ethic, the attitude, they even randomly talk to inmates, and they say, your facility is second to none in this country. And I'm very proud of that. And it, it didn't come easy, as yeah, you know. no, it takes time, it takes right, time. to change the culture. It takes time. Right? Because uh, we're human beings. We get into a certain mode, and we're like, change right. doesn't come easy. Exactly. And people, but at the end of the day, people want to be part of something progressive and something new and exciting, right? I and, agree. And, and also have an opportunity to have an impact on somebody that's going to be released so that they don't come back. You don't want to hear those stories that somebody else got, you know, you just let out six months ago or six weeks ago. Right. Or even six years ago that somehow or another got back in trouble and they're either uh, in the state penitentiary or they're yeah. back in the House of Correction or another House of Correction somewhere well, else. Well, you know, I'll mention one thing on top of that because you're so right. And one thing I mentioned to, now we have an academy mm -hmm. in-house and it's, like I said, the standards are the highest to get into that academy. We just started a new academy with maybe 18 people in it, you know, where most of our academies go from about 16 to 24. Mm -hmm. um, these are 12-week in-house training, highest standard to get in, not only to put you through physical fitness and written exams and drug testing and, and all these exams, but then we put you through a, through a psychiatric evaluation because it's been shown that a lot of great people maybe aren't cut out for the work with inmates. Right, right. So we get it weeded down to a group that we feel great about, and then we put them through an intensive 12-week course. And at the end of that, we have a great celebration. We have a graduation ceremony, families, friends. It's a wonderful, uh, yeah. it happens every two, two times a year. And we're going to get to see the next one on April, in April. That's right. Right. That's right. But we're gonna. But, but you know, on the, how these work is. Yeah. When we get to the end of them, I, I I usually speak to the families and to the officers. And one thing I say every time is that, you know, not only is your work hard and demanding and challenging, but at the end of the day, if you do your job well, it's gonna be it's gonna really be recognized by the crimes that are never committed. Sure. I mean, if people get out of jail and they're rehabilitated and they go out. So you have to understand, you do your job better. It, you're gonna, you're gonna, it's gonna be the crimes that aren't committed. That's hard to, you know, figure out. Like, 
it's hard to quantify that. Well, it's hard to see that, right? It's hard it's to see like, it, but we all you may know never it's know, true. right? Somebody's back on their feet, things are going well, they got a family now. That's Unless right. you bump into them sometimes, exactly. you might never know whatever happened. Exactly. Them, right? 978 537 That's the number to call here at Inside Lemonster. And uh, Sheriff Lewis with us. Call and ask any question you'd like, and we'll be here for uh, another 10 or 15 minutes. But I wanted to make sure we got to, uh, I mean, it seems like, you know, your crews are here all the time. Yeah. And some of the things that, uh, some of you know, the, the help at the fields that some of our DPW sure. workers would never get to. And right. I know you have a whole list. Why don't you just read off the whole list right well, there? Well, I'll, I'll, I'll lead into that. Some thank of those. you. That's I will. A, that's be, a good thing. Well, first of all, I want to thank you, Mayor. You've been uh, someone who's called us uh, in my tenure as sheriff and said, we want your team to come out, bring your inmate crews out with us. These are supervised crews. These are the least uh, likely to reoffend, not least likely to offend inmates when they come in. They are when they leave. But they're they're nonviolent offenders. Right. They don't have uh, you know they don't have like weapons charges. They earn good time and they end up in what we call our work release building. All right. These folks are able to go out into the community like Lemonster and give work four or five hours a day, supervised by an mm -hmm. officer. Yeah. But they go out to the community and they give back. Mm. And what I love about this program, Dean, we've been doing this now for ten years. We've saved over ten million dollars oh, in Worcester yeah. County. Yeah. And the inmates who get the program uh, summed it up one day for me. Inmates said, "How are you doing this program?" He said, "Sheriff." I want to thank you for letting me be in this program. I said, well, why is that? He goes, because, you know, before I ever got in this program, Sheriff, I never worked in my life, never had a job. He goes, I got into your place. You gave me a chance. And every day I look forward to that officer coming and get me out of, get me out of the bed and get me out on the road. And when I get to, when I get to the, do those jobs, whether it be cleaning or, you know, a, a cemetery or painting a senior center or whatever it is, um, they say the response the community give them is so positive because they feel a sense of dignity and self-respect I'd never had before. Mm. And I think of this all the time. I say, can you name another? You don't have to, but because it's a rhetorical question, but can you name another government program that saves millions of dollars and turns people's lives around? Right, right. And you have availed yourself of this program through the city and departments. And I just, because I, I'd forget, I'll just give you an example. In the town of Lemister alone, we calculate about $558,000 of work we've done in 10 years. Oh, easy. And just to give you an example, just a sample of the, the places we worked, and I've, I've visited virtually every one of these. Veterans Homestead, Emergency Management Center, incredible place. Mm -hmm. Housing Authority, Girls and Boys Club, St. Leo Cemetery, Johnny Appleseed Rest Stop, one of my first uh, sites mm -hmm. that you called me on. We went to trim the prune back That's there, right, the that was a long trees. time ago now. <laughs> um, Sholon Farm, Little Red School, ARC of Opportunity, Little League, San Ana School, uh, St. Leo School, Doyle Field, Pop Warner, Ruberge, uh, the Roberge Veterans Memorial. Right. Um, you know, that's just a sample of right. all the work we do, and we're proud to be helping this community. Well, a lot of times when I'm out there, the, the, you know, we, we chat, right? We have a little yeah. conversation, and they're always reluctant to engage. Mm -hmm. And then you, it's, you're the mayor? I'm like, yeah. yeah. And then it ends up being a conversation, mm -hmm. but it, they leave you with that hope. That's right. That things will turn around for them, and, and, and you know, you hate to see anybody in jail, right? Anybody right. at all. But it does give the person the time to maybe get out of what they were in. And, and it does. you offer great programs for, for people with addictions. And so you offer so many opportunities for them to, to turn their lives around. And, and yeah. so I think everybody that reacts and gets close to them feels the same way. Like, I really hope, I really wish you well. I hope. Absolutely. You, you know, let's take a call. Call, welcome to the show. Thank you. Good evening. Hi. Mr. Mayor, Sheriff Wu, how are you guys doing? Good. Good. Thank you. Okay. Uh, I would be remiss if I did not call and tell the sheriff what a wonderful job he is doing in Worcester County in general. Um, he is involved in so many programs that were not there uh, before. Mm -hmm. um, he's been in for, what, 10 years, I think I heard him say? Right. Yes. Just amazing, so thankful that he is our sheriff now. And I also wanted to ask, um, you've got that program, that self-defense program yeah. from that um, Marquette Foundation yes, or whatever. The is there Foundation. any chance yeah. of getting that in the Lemonster area? Yeah, well, first of all, thank you for the kind words, and I, I wish every call I ever got in my life was as kind as yours. <laughs> so uh, God bless, and thank you so much. But. Um, I'm really glad you mentioned that because we have limited time and one of the best initiatives we've taken on uh, in the last year and a half or so was, you know, we're trying to help uh, make something super positive come of one of the, you know, unthinkable tragedies and that was the Vanessa Marquardt murder in Princeton a couple of years ago. 
Um, I had some affiliation with the Marcotts and, and the family. I know there's a Lemister connection as well. She with was them. from Lemister. Exactly. <laughs> right, her mother moved, but I mean, she they're was from in Princeton, but they're from, they're from Lemister. So sure. I just want you to know, I have two daughters that, that, that touched me in a real personal way, and is just, if the circumstance would have it, the Markov Foundation started a conversation with the Sheriff's Department and said, can you help us make something positive out of this? We came up with a concept. Our training department would offer self-defense classes to women across Worcester County, free of charge, uh, to give people an opportunity to prevent themselves from finding themselves in a position of Vanessa. The Markov Foundation said, we want to we want to be your partner in this. We brought it to our training department. To make a long story short, in, since we started this program, it's now taught by all women correctional staff. They wanted to take the lead on it. It is incredible. It's a two-hour class. We bring it around the county regularly. And to answer your question, um, we did the last one we did was up at the Fidelity Bank Center here, right That's here right. in Lemonster. Yeah. And we will bring it back. We have one next week in Millbury. But the reality is this, in two hours, we can have women come into this uh, setting and learn situational awareness. That's the first thing we teach everyone, especially women. Unfortunately, women have a, you know, uh, nine times more likely to be suffer an assault and a sexual assault than a man. So it's just the world we live in. I wish it wasn't, but it is. So we're trying to help by offering uh, classes for women across the county that they can attend. When I say free of charge, it might be $10, but that's just to reserve a spot because right. the first time we did it, four people didn't show up. Right. And that was the four women that could have, we had a waiting list. Right. So thank you for mentoring that, Markov Foundation. We are so proud of this uh, partnership. We just celebrated with them at Brady's uh, this week, two did nights you? ago. Yeah, nice. We had a, an appreciation dinner for the partners with Marcotte. And uh, we are committed to continue this self-defense awareness program throughout the county. We'll be back in Lemonster. If you want to contact our office, um, and help us set it up. We're always looking for good locations. Uh, Fidelity Bank was a great location. Yeah, so no, we, thank there's you. plenty of places we could do it. Yeah. Thank you for the call. Oh, you're very welcome. Have All a good right. evening, guys. Yep, thank take you. Care. Bye. Once again, 978 537 7760. That's the number to call, extension 3. And uh, about another 15 or 20 minutes here. And uh, by all means, uh, give us a call. Yeah, so I mean, it really is much more than just a jail. Somebody's yeah. sentenced, they go into the jail, you try to do some rehab, maybe some, you know, polishing of skills. Mm -hmm. But I think it's safe to say that um, the process of entering back into the community begins the day you arrive. Yeah, the term that's become probably a, um, one, of the, one of the most prevalent terms in America today is re-entry. Right. And we've always had the adage that re-entry begins on day one. Right. And, um, you know, it's an easy thing to say, but it's hard work. Yeah, the clock's ticking. You're it's only going to be here so much time. It's ticking, and you've got a lot of challenges with people, and some people are going to take a step back before they take two steps forward. But we have to, we do it for our community, Dean. You know, we do it for the folks here in North County and all across Worcester County and beyond where people get to. I always remind our team that, you know, of course we're trying to reach individuals, and we give everyone an opportunity. But at the end of the day, if they're less likely to repeat offend, we all win. Our sure, community is a safer place, you know, and that's the ultimate goal here. So I'm honored to have a role in that equation because it's a critical one. And with the world we've we've now fallen into, especially in the last 10 years, about the addiction and recovery right. and all these no, things. No, that's made it much more complicated. It's big. It's big sure. and it's complicated. But, you know, you also feel like we can make a difference. And mm. that's why I have that face-to-face -face program I bring into the middle and high schools where I've brought, you know, in, in, I've been in uh, both the middle school, two of the middle mm. schools here in Lamonster. Um, I've, uh, I, I've, I've brought that program. Tomorrow I have one in Rutland I'm doing. 400,000 young people. Teach them in a, in a very entertaining presentation. I think I'm the only sheriff in America that does it. But we go into the middle schools, essentially, and we teach about myths and facts about drugs. Mm. And we try to take the myths that all the young people know. You know, that the... The stuff they hear on the street. The stuff that they hear, they, they can get... It's not addictive. They yeah, can quit yeah, any time yeah. they want. Yeah. That Oxycontin's a, a medicine. It's yeah, not yeah, a drug. Yeah, yeah. All this nonsense. And we try to dispel the rumors and give them the facts and do it in a way with videos and, and entertaining. And I do it myself. Um, and I'm really proud of that. That's something that you probably maybe wouldn't have heard anybody talking about 10, 20 right. years ago. Right. Now it's every day. You yeah. know, I mean, yeah. you're, you're here and your EMTs are responding on a daily basis All the time. to overdoses sure. and people in recovery. But you're right. Reentry for us begins on day one. Um, we have continuously striven to increase our after incarceration support now for inmates. If you get out, we have just beefed up what we call our, our recovery center. Those are for people who are out of facility, in the community, 
and maybe they've either lost their way a little or they still need more help, right. we offer it. But we also have, which I know you're familiar with, but we have those community correction centers, mm -hmm. which are diversion. They, a lot of people don't know this, but beyond the regular jail, we have three centers we run, the Sheriff's Department directly. One is in Fitchburg, as I mentioned before, and then we have one in Worcester and one in Webster. But these centers take someone who, say, is before the court, could be sentenced to jail, mostly, say, drug behavior, uh, not a not a violent offender. The judge can say to them, you know what, I could send you to the house, but instead I'm going to divert you to a day reporting center. Yep. You got to see the sheriff's people every day. They're going to try to test you. Yeah. But if you stay clean, we're going to offer you programming. We're going to let you live at home, mm -hmm. feed yourself. You know, you live at home, pay your rent, but you can also, if you get a job, we'll work with you in that. But the bottom line is, you're giving people an opportunity to rehabilitate themselves while still at home in the community. Right. And if they violate, right. they can get you know yanked. Carl, welcome to the show. Hello. Hello. Hi Hello. there. Hello. I can hear you. Hi, this is uh, Jim LeBlanc, Director of Emergency Management. Oh, hi, Jim. Yeah, Jim. Yeah, and I, I absolutely take a good advantage of Lou's uh, community <laughs> service program. Yes, you do. I, I had uh, his men in this week. You could not believe the work they did in such a short period of time. And uh, we really appreciate all the help we get. You make me look good, Lou. <laughs> well, Jim, I want to tell you, I, you gave me a beautiful tour of that place a couple, maybe last year when my uh, my inmate crew was up there, and we have so much to be proud of. That center is remarkable, oh, yeah. and what you've put together uh, after, you know, I think it really came up. The real need was after the ice storm. Wasn't right, that really right. the real devastating uh, situation up here? So. Jim, thank you for taking advantage of the inmates. They love working at your facility, and it's well worth us putting the effort in. You have amazing place up there, and uh, I, I think anybody who hasn't seen it should go see oh, it. I, I, people come in, and they're like, is this for real? It's unbelievable. <laughs> I didn't know this was here. There's nothing like it outside of Worcester in no, the whole county. The, in fact, the, the governor at the time uh, had come in in the last big storm that we had, and he said, this is better than anything we have. Yeah. Isn't that yeah, amazing? It's, it's really extraordinary. Well, thanks, Jim. You do a great job. You got a great team. That's what it is. It's all working together, right? Yeah. Just trying to get the job done. It's all about. All right, Thank Jim. Again, Take care. Thank you. 978-537-7760. That's the number to call. It's great to uh, you know, come down here on a, oh, sure. on a Thursday night. It's getting a little cool out there, a little bit of snow out there. That's okay. We're not that far from hey, you, right? Hey, you were saying at the beginning of the show, I said, the way I look at it, I'm not a winter guy. I'm a hot weather guy, so... I look at every day as like, did it snow today? <laughs> We're getting closer. Okay, one last day to, to deal with the winter. So, uh, hey, I got to ask you one thing, yes. too. So you started the show. You were telling us about driving through Newton. You left us all hanging about Golf. what you were they looking were at. They were golfing. And well, then, uh, I then thought you, I should have picked that. He's I, a golfer. I, he, I was waiting for him. So he probably didn't hear me right. No, I mean, people are playing golf. No I mean, it's, it, you know, the, the Channel 4 did a segment on uh, Rocky, the, the guy that's on the pond over there, the mannequin. Uh -huh. And everybody's like, there's still ice? And we're like, yeah, in Lummister there is. <laughs> but, you know, out there, they're raking the lawns. I know. They haven't had snow in a long time. I know. There. It is such a different... And one thing with us here, and, you know, this is commiserating with us, the, 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 the people of Worcester County, but not being a snow guy. I lived in Florida for a while after law school. I was a state prosecutor in Dade County, Florida, and I really came back because my family's here, you mm. know? But, and I'm not... I'm, when I say my perfect day is... 85 degrees and humid. Really? I like it. Oh, humid. If you're not doing anything, it's fine. Well, but I just you're out working it. and oh, running a jackhammer. Agree. Oh, no, it's not easy, but I've never been. A, I've done some jackhammer, but pretty much I'm inside, you know, so I don't have to deal with it with a, with a uniform right, on. Right. I agree. But, boy, do we live in the snow belt of New oh, England. Yeah, it's yes. like you go to Boston, it's like a different planet. They yeah. don't get winters compared to And the further to west you go, you know, but I, I, this went to, at some point, I remember going up the hill, um, you know, from Lemon State, you go up towards Mount Elam Road, and it gets a little higher. Yeah. And it was raining here, no problem. Yeah. And I got up to that top of that hill by Mount Elam Road in Fitchburg. Lemon State was both on the line. And it was snowing. And it was, yeah. the snow had stuck to the trees. By the time I got the gardener, you could hardly move. <laughs> yeah. And yet back down here in Lemon State, which is less than, you know, 15, 20 minutes away, it's raining. And that's really how it goes. So, you know, the old... It, it, no matter how much they change climate control or global warming, it's always that line, 128, 495, 190, yep. you know, and then... You know, we're all two. in the same boat. We watch Boston News, and every time they say, we're going to get one inch, except yeah. for the hills of Worcester, you right, know right. we're getting That's us. ten times that. That's you and Rutland of... Holden, Holden, Rutland, Fitchburg, yeah, Lemister. 
we get snow here. Yeah, and we it's do. frustrating because in Boston they act like they don't really pay attention to us. No. If they get eight inches, it's front page news. Yeah. If we get a, if we get fourteen, they don't even And they cover want it. local aid. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's your bad. Hey, we doing uh, we doing photos of the week, by the way? Are we? Yeah, we have the photos of the All week. Right, let's try it. Hang in there. Yeah, We're of just course. doing photos of the week. I've got to do it. All right, here we go. Pictures of the week. There we are, uh, just a couple of tables. We're uh, in Newton for the mayor's uh, monthly meeting and uh, had the uh, Secretary of uh, Education there and dabbled a little bit into recycling and the future of recycling. And, and uh, it was a good meeting, and thanks to the mayor of uh, Newton for hosting. Lemonster is the location for the next mayor's meeting in uh, March. And here we are at our... Um, this is the meeting of the mind, so to speak, and we have what's called the uh, Development Review Board meeting, and that's all uh, city departments as well as uh, those involved in city inspections, and that is some of the team from the architects and the project managers that will be working on the project, going through the little, you know, what ifs, right, little things, and some of the logistics on uh, getting this project going. So we'll be building a new police station, and. Uh, we're, we're, we're moving right along, as they say. Um, we had Governor Weld out. Uh, we invited Lou, all of the presidential candidates. We think this area is really symbolic of America. Mm -hmm. it's, the, it's the true melting pot, always has been. All-American um, city. Yeah, no, I mean, it's just really what it is. And the students at uh, Lummis to High and Lummis to CTEI uh, got a chance to meet the governor. They were, the students were, were awesome, I'll tell you. They asked better questions than, um, than you see on the debates. They were really well thought out questions. And, uh, and, and you could see they were very serious about those questions they were asking. Mm -hmm. And the governor did a good job. That's sort of a little bit symbolic because when I first got elected, the first person to come see me was Governor Welder. We sat right about in that same spot That's right there. That's unbelievable, huh? Isn't that cool? And, uh, there we are. So once upon a time when uh, kids get to dress up in their little uh, costumes, their little uh, Cinderella and Snow White costumes, and there were some uh, lots of things for them to do. Uh, that was the last day of school vacation on Friday, and uh, we have a bunch of more things to coming up. And uh, so well attended, about 170, mm. almost 200 kids came in, and uh, we had a blast. Great, last week it was a great weekend for skating. We're really... You know, it's, it's been received so well, even from people that don't skate, that say, I love going through downtown and seeing the skating rink. Yeah. So we're going to try to maybe raise some money privately next year and get a, a refrigerated unit because mm -hmm. we're just so sus suspect to the, you know, no. we're, 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 it, we're, if, if it drops a couple of degrees, it gets all mushy. And so we've, we've gotten a lot of time out of it. But here we are at the end of February and you can't skate on it. Right. It's all water right now. <laughs> but... It, it really has been well received, better than I thought. Mm -hmm. And a fun time. So we had Winterfest, which lots of times when they have Winterfest, again, it's, it's uh, raining or it's, it's not good enough, but plenty of things to do. And the fire department was there doing an ice rescue. Uh, the emergency management was there with their hovercraft. Uh, the scout, Boy Scouts were there. A um, lot to do. And uh, we had a lot of fun. And the kids didn't have their skates with them, but, man, you would never know it. They were all over the, all over the pond down there at Barrett Park. Early voting. Lou, I'll tell you, first thing on Monday morning, people were in it. I'm thinking, but they haven't seen the debates. I mean, maybe they would change their mind if they, you know what I mean? That's how I, I am. I'm a, little, I'm a little bit, yeah, I don't <laughs> I'm know. I, I, don't I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to tell you. I don't know what to think. Um, I have no comment. <laughs> don't forget to place your bets on Rocky. Rocky, uh, if you don't know and you're new to town, uh, Rocky does eventually fall through the ice. He did tip over today, but that was just from the wind, so he didn't sink, despite rumors. So, Get online, and uh, you, you can uh, bet on when you think Rocky will go through the ice. And that's uh, our photos of the week here. And so, yeah, it's been a busy time this winter. You know, I yeah. think what's happening is, because it's been warm, it's sort of sped up the process of things that typically would happen in, say, April or May. Everybody's already thinking spring. You know, plans are coming in and contractors are coming in, which is a good thing because yeah. they don't all come in at once. See, but I don't, I've lived here enough to say I don't count my chickens. Now, I know, I've had but some of the worst. I bar know. I, you let your guard down and you get bombed. Last March, bombed. Yeah, last March we got snow so, and it wouldn't melt. Yeah. It just hung around no, so I'm not because up we yet. had that cold front, that cold air coming down from Canada, you exactly. know? Exactly. So, but um, I can feel that sun. 
And that's the important part. Oh, I feel it's it getting too. It's, stronger. It's been a great winter so far. Every no day. question, but I'm still not letting my guard down. There's too much left. So March 3rd is the, uh, so tomorrow's the last day. If you're watching the show today, it's the 27th. Tomorrow's the 28th. And uh, it's the last day to come to uh, early vote. And uh, that's from 8.30 to 4. And then March 3rd is the actual date for uh, the primary. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's pretty exciting. And um, so, yeah, so I mean, City Hall will be busy next week. And uh, yeah, so lots going on. We're already getting ready. So we, we're a season ahead. So we're yeah. getting ready for spring and f summer. And, um, and then in the, obviously in the summertime, we're actually getting ready for fall and winter. And people are like, what? I'm like, yeah, we're bringing in salt. And, but you really have to be, of course. you know, it's like when you go to Target and see bathing suits in January, you're like, what? It's the middle of winter. But you really have to be that That's right. sort of season ahead. And, mm -hmm. and so we're getting ready for some big projects in the city. It's going to be exciting. And the park that we have on Mechanic Street is mm -hmm. uh, really coming along. They're going to start March 8th and uh, start on the second phase of it. And, you know, we're doing the same sort of things. We're working on the ground in neighborhoods to try to make a difference uh, so kids have something positive to do. So yeah. they're not hanging off the back of the train down here on Lancaster Street, going to Sterling and mm -hmm. figuring out how to get back or doing the thing. So I always say, kids are going to do s something, right? It's either going to be good or it might not mm -hmm. so, be so great. That's right. So, but, you know, what I noticed is, and there was always a difference of opinion on this, is the more you give them to do that's positive, they will. I agree. And things like, you know, we didn't have 20-something years ago, we didn't have the recreation programs that we had. The schools couldn't offer what they offered. Right. This, the, the, the boys, we had no Boys and Girls Club. We didn't have a YMCA. You didn't have any of these things to, uh, to be able to offer for some positive activities here in the community. I think it's made a, a substantial difference. And, um, and, and there are options. And, you know, we have the pool. And if a, a family can't afford it, we, we can help them out with that. So yeah. we never turn anybody away. And the other thing, and we talk about this quite often, is um, we're probably the events capital or the festival capital of the world in terms of all the things that we have, but it really allows everybody. We include yeah. everybody. Now, there are plenty of events in the area that it's going to cost you money to park and it's going to mm -hmm. cost you money to get in. You've got to ride the rides. Then you yeah. need tickets to buy mm -hmm. the food. And by the time you get out of there, it, it, you're broke. Well, there are a lot of families that can't afford that mm -hmm. and want to have that family experience in a community setting, maybe bumping the people they haven't seen in a while. Real, true yeah. community. And it works, and I think people are thankful. And um, I'm always, you know, sort of like when you bump into somebody that says, "Hey, geez, you know, I had a positive experience in prison." And you're like, "What? Yeah, well, you know, I was I was down at the, you know, at right. the state facility, and I'm doing okay. Things are, are good for me now." Mm -hmm. You might never hear those stories, and yeah. so here we hear those positive stories, and so yeah. hopefully we're making a difference. And you know, I think we slide back sometimes when you know kids think that vaping isn't, uh, right. you know, it, it isn't going to be harmful for them for their health, and you know, all these things they learn in the street, right, right, from people telling them things. We hope that we're uh, helping to provide positive influence to them, and even a summer job. You know, a few years ago, we started right. working with Mass Hire and said, let's do a job hiring fair in the school so these students will have a, a part-time job now or maybe a full-time right. and part-time or, or one or either or both in the summer. And I know students that will work a full-time job and then a part-time job in the summer right. to make as much money as they possibly can. And so... All those things are, I think, and I hope on your end, you see that they're making a difference. Well, I'll say this to you, Mayor, and, 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 and uh, you know me well enough. I don't come up here and you know patronize you. I just say it like it is. Um, when I was growing up in the 70s, if you remember the 70s, you know. No, I was too young used to say, well, the 60s, if you remember it, you didn't do it right. But I wasn't around. <laughs> I was born in the 60s. But, you know, in the 70s, I knew, you know, I grew up in Holden, and yeah, I yeah. lived in, next door to my grandparents, you know, and. Talked to Rep Higgins once. We grew up very similarly situated with our family compounds with parents and grandparents. And uh, I actually bought my grandparents' house, raised my kids right next to wow. my mom and dad, just the way I was raised. Right. But I mean, I mean, lived in Worcester when I was smaller, a three decker, you know, classic city. But we moved out when I was 10, and I spent time there. And my memory of the North County, Fitchburg, Lemister, particularly, was they just kicked our butt in football every year, That's and I true. didn't spend any time. But they did. Right. Yeah. I said it. It's true. But I'll tell you what was really enlightening for me. I mean, after I graduated from college and, and law school, I lived in five different states, you know, not only in Massachusetts, but I, I lived in New York City. Uh, then I moved to Philadelphia, went to law school in Philly. I moved to Miami. I moved to California where I was working construction. So I've been around, and I come back here, and I didn't move back here for 20 years. I left Worcester County for 20 wow. years. I lived in Boston and wow. Framingham. 
And I moved back, and just a couple of short years later, I, I was fortunate enough to have the right circumstance to get elected rep, and I did that for eight years. And I represented not only Holden, Rutland, Princeton, Sterling, but Oakham and, and Hubbardston and Westminster, mm. which is not too far from here. Sure. But it really wasn't until I ran for sheriff that I really got a sense of the communities up here. Mm. And Mayor, I mean this, uh, Lemister is one of the most special, amazing communities I've ever been in any state I've ever lived in. It, maybe it's the right size. I know the leadership you've offered has been very, very helpful. This is a wonderful community. People have pride in their city. It's clean, it's safe, it's got beautiful neighborhoods, it's got a vibrant downtown, and it has a sense of community. And like you said, I know the, those events because I go to them. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We go. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, whether they, you know, you can start rattling them off, but the reality is, you always go and see people. Everybody's always happy to see each other. It's a community feel here. And I'm blessed to feel like Lemister's part of my life. Sure, and my community. absolutely. People know who you are. I and mean, I that's know, a, and it means hey, a lot. Hey, to me. the sheriff, right? They do. I feel that way here. And I've always loved this town. I, Lemister's a very, very special place to me. And, and I think, as you said, part of it is the fact that it's, it's a city, but it's not too big. Right. And then it's not too small, so it's the right size. What do you so about, we right have around 40? 45. We'll 45 probably be 46 now. to 50 in the next census. But, oh. but, the, but the reality is, if you go to the neighborhoods, it's like being in Princeton or Lunenburg or it Sterling, is. right? It but is. But yet you have the amenities of a city, and that's you do. a hard thing to sort of get. And I hear mayors talking about it and planning people talk about it all the time is the right balance. You know, that's the trick. It's like a ceiling fan. You try to get it, or the thermostat, you try to get it to, you don't want it too hot, you don't want it too cold. It's a hot balance to get to. But yeah. I think we've arrived at that point where, especially people that are coming in, you know, that's your best, right, is your fresh set of eyes. Yeah. And like, hey, so what do you think? Yeah. Or, or, or they will call us and say, I just want to tell you. I'm like, no, that's the tipping point. It's when you don't have to ask somebody right. when they just offer it unsolicited mm -hmm. and you get that positive feedback so right. you know you're doing the right things. And and I think, and I have to say, it's a very generous city. The businesses here are extremely generous. Yeah. Had a conversation with a, one of the mayors in, 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 um, in, in close to Worcester County, and he said, you know, people come in, our people that own the businesses, a lot of them, we have a lot of high tech, and I mean, they come in, they drive in, they go into the office park, and they leave. They hit Route 20 or 495 or the mm -hmm. Turnpike, True. and we don't really get to know who they are. Right. And, and, and it's the very opposite here. I can pick up the phone and call anybody. In fact, I just go into the business and say to me, how do I, ha do I have to stand there? There's like this long line every day at the registry. You know how I can not stand there? Yeah, go to AAA, right? But right. we have that relationship with everybody, almost all business owners in town, where we can pick up the phone and call them directly on yeah. ourselves and vice versa. If mm -hmm. they need something, they can call. And, but anytime we've ever needed anything. Uh, we just did that those last events last week where we had uh, the, the, the movie night where the kids get a box yeah. and they get to decorate it. And, yeah. and, and I asked them, Melissa, I said, so how'd you do? And she said, we still had people making donations the night of the event. And somebody said, hey, just take some money. I don't know, buy candy bars for the kids. And we're like, really? And it, 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 there is never a time when somebody doesn't step up yeah. to, to help you out. And if you really need help and there's a family in trouble, there's been a fire or whatever, everyone just sort of jumps in. And that's the, that's the balance you want, right? So people yeah. know each other. They look out for each other. Well, you know, one thing you mentioned on top of that, which is it's really the benefit of us being in public service, public sure. life, you know, is that... Sometimes if you watch TV and you get caught up in the media, you think everybody's each other's throat, you know? And that's, I think that helps them get their ratings up. If you watch the Democratic debate the other night. Well, well, Democratic you, you, debate. You anyone, watch, you know, I mean, the, everywhere. You can watch Fox or MSNBC or CNN or whatever, but they seem to want to, like, drive us apart in many ways. And um, The game but, of gut you started, and now it's the game of capture. You know, well, remember, but, they used to, they yeah, used to say, it's the game of gut you. Well, now it's like nobody will even... Like, you can't even get in the same room and work out, like, you know, I, I, and, and just thinking ahead, when you think about all of the capital needs in our transportation system across the country, if they would get together and, and just do that, right. pass a transportation bill or an immigration bill to say, okay, we do want people to come into this country. Right. So we've got to work something out here so that we match them. And there are many countries where um, it's a merit-based sort of thing where they right. come in and they have a job. So I sponsor them. Right. So I call and say, listen, exactly. at my business, I have a position for them. Mm -hmm. and, and, and I'm going to help them get an apartment. I'm going to help them set right. up. Maybe my church is going to help them. But we're going to sponsor that person and bring them but in. But you're giving exactly what my point is, that common sense we all agree with common sense. What you just yeah, described, yeah. I think you That's can get basic. Republicans Everybody and Democrats yeah. will support that. But it doesn't, it doesn't serve some people's political needs, so they try to drive us apart. And, and what, I just, what I'm getting to on this point with us is just, you know, 
I heard someone say once, if we all just put our cell phones down, closed our laptops, shut off our TVs, and just walked around town, you'd be amazed at how much you have in common with everybody. Oh, like you said true. about this community. And, but when you watch TV and you listen to social media, they try to make you think we don't have anything in common with the other side. We're Americans. We love our communities. I think people, you know, 80% of the people are all the same. Well, they or all or just somebody's wanna... afraid somebody's going to get credit for it. It's just crazy. So somebody's going to get credit for it. No, 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 no. no. We, you know, and, and I hate to say it, but I could see this happening yesterday where all of a sudden, you know, the whole coronavirus is like turning political. Like, that's <laughs> becoming political. It is. And it's I got crazy. an email last night, and I'm like, what? From an elected, you know, federal elected official. I'm like, right. what? Did, clearly, I, could, I didn't have to read through the lines. This is plain as, you know. Yeah. The, and I'm like, oh, no, don't tell me they're going to, like, make this political now. And I'm like, no, this is serious business. You're dealing with people's health, right. business, people. You put people, and, you know, you put, you, you put people in fear. I remember the, the president of the United States coming on, uh, President Bush, saying, I know that, you know, the Twin Towers got attacked and the Pentagon. Right. But if we stop and we don't move and we just sit here looking at the TV, then... The economy is going to crash, right. and that's then it's a double hit. That's what that's they right. wanted. That's exactly. That's right. So we've got to get back. Out. You got to get back to the mall. Yeah. You got to stop buying things. Get your family out. And slowly, people did. They got away from the TV, and they they started to understand. But this whole virus thing, they could kick us into a panic, and we should be prepared. Obviously, absolutely. But putting people in a panic, I've heard people canceling their flights. They're not eating at certain restaurants. They're afraid of this. They don't want their kids to go to school. And I'm like. It's not going to be long. If people don't step up and take some you know, leadership here, then, you know, uh, it, we're going to end up in trouble. Just, I don't know, the stock market uh, tanked again today? Did, did I understand that? I've been so I, busy, I, I, but I know I it did the last me, three days. I saw a little quick yeah, kind of thing there. The it said that, you know, it dropped again, and I'm thinking... If if we stop playing politics with that, with the, 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 with the virus, something so serious, and we stop messing with that, and, and again, being prepared is one thing, right. and, and that's important. Everybody should be. No matter where you are, what state you are, everybody should be prepared. But if you're going to just intensify this and put people into Nobody a panic. Nobody's served by trying to build hysteria. If it's people want to play it politically, it's just a shame because we're, we should be better than Everyone will be hurt by it. How that's much right. time we got there, Mr. Powell? You know what I'm saying? So, yeah. I mean, I, so it really, we have to get back to that, you know, find something. Like, okay, everybody, find something we can all work on. Right. Right? Find a project we can all work on and start from there, I guess, and work across lines, you know, political lines, and get back to the Tip O'Neill days where they're like, okay, we disagree on this one, let's move on to the next one. Now it's just like, it's like a blood sport. And it is, but I still feel like, in my position, yours, I come across more people that are actually trying to get things done. Oh, yeah, we and work in that world. the other people are just making noise. Yeah, yeah, but we yeah, meet yeah. the people who want to go solve problems. That's uh, what I love uh, about our jobs. Well, I, and, and, and I think that, it, it, you know, there is an understanding that, you know, the job locally gets done, right? From, right. from when it's closer. And even the state will say, if there's a disaster, we'll be there, but it's going to take a little while to get there. That's the federal right. government's saying, it's going to take even longer for right. us to get there. We are going to come help, but you should rely on each other. And that's, that's mm -hmm. really what we do. Sure. Thanks a million for coming on. Oh, yeah, anytime. It was Mayor. great to have you. I was only going to have you on for 15 minutes. We did an hour. <laughs> you get back, you put in for overtime, and I'm going to file grievance no if you don't. No worries about no, that, okay. but uh, it was you a pleasure. It never ends, right? Your job really does. Okay, hey, Sheriff, thank you. Good night, everybody. Thanks to the whole crew here inside Lemister. Good night. God bless you. Remember, the world is run by those who show up, need to show up. Good night. Inside Lemonster is brought to you through the generous support of Colonial Insulation Company, residential and commercial insulation and fireproofing services, specializing in blown-in cellulose as well as spray foam insulation. For more information, visit their website, colonialinsulation.com. And by Medical Arts Hearing Instruments, 52 West Street in Lemonster, locally and authentically providing better hearing and quality of life since 1978 www.donotshout.com